The median household in Arizona makes around $73,000 a year. Then a lot of people say, okay, at $73,000 a year, how much can I afford in living expenses? So we're going to break all of that down and more today. What's up, everybody? Mark Cain, your local realtor here in the Phoenix area. And if you find value in these videos, I'd appreciate if you like the videos, share it with your friends, trying to be a resource, trying to help people understand real estate so that way they can make the best decision possible. But let's get right into it. Okay, so we're going to do a couple different things today where we're going to break down with the median income in Arizona, how much you can afford for housing expenses, but then we're also going to play with some other numbers as well. But let's make sure we understand terms. So average and median are not the same. So an average is when you have, let's say, all these numbers, you add them all up, and then however many of those numbers you divide by that, and that's how you get the average. With the median, it's you have the highest number, lowest number, and it's what number is directly in the middle. So we are going off the median. So the median in Arizona is around $73,000 a year. So we're going to be using that number and then we'll play with some other numbers as well to see, all right, how much can people afford? Now, again, I am an advocate of trying to stay under 30% of your net income for your housing expenses. So we're going to talk through all of that. So I'm going to do a screencast here. So let me move my screen. So I'm using a website, um, that's called Smart Asset. There's a bunch of other websites I could have used, but this one was the easiest to use and had the best things to kind of show you guys. So we're going to go off the median income. So, and the nice thing is this calculates like some of the taxes and different things like that. So it does show you some of that. It's not going to be 100% accurate because obviously everyone's situation is different, right? So this is based off of someone being single and then I'll show you married as well. So single, making $73,000 a year, you will net about forty four eighty one a month. Okay. So, and then it shows you like some of the breakdowns, like your gross is just over $6,000, takes out some of the taxes, all that different stuff. So again, these numbers can vary. So what does that mean, right? So if you make 4481, what does that mean? So I'm gonna pull up a calculator. So if you make 4481 a month, and again, this is based on someone that's single, and let's say we wanna stay at 30% of your net income, right? So I'm gonna take out 70%. So, in order to afford housing under 30%, you would have to find something that you could pay about thirteen fifty a month. That's pretty low. And again, most that's hard to find. Now, you might be able to find an apartment for that. So again, that's where you're seeing a lot of people are choosing to rent. And that's okay because, again, renting versus buying is not for everyone. It depends on your situation. So if you're single and you're like, I make $70,000 a year, you're probably going to be renting. And you're probably going to be over 30% of your net income. Because 30% of your net income is $1,344. A lot of apartments right now, you're renting at you know, $1,300, $1,400, $1,500, depending on where it is. Maybe you can find cheaper. Just, again, depends on where it is here in the Phoenix area. So let's look at if you were married, right? So it does change it a little bit, not a ton. So it goes up a little bit, right? So it went from, I'll go back so you guys can see it. So from $4,481 to $4,758. So again, it's not going to change dramatically. So I'll show you that 47.58. We're going to subtract 70% and come out to 14.27. So a little bit better if you're married making that amount. So because taxes and different stuff change. So hard to find that. So that's where a lot of people are not buying if you're making near the median. And I totally understand that because it's one of those, it's like, hey, it's hard to find something near fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars to stay under thirty percent. But that's why we're seeing a lot of people actually go up near thirty-five, forty percent of their net income when they're buying houses because it's hard to even find rent at this price. You know, if you're trying to find a two, three bedroom to rent, you're not paying this. You're paying way more than this in rent. So that, and again, it depends on where you're trying to live. If you're going way out in Buckeye, it's gonna be cheaper. But if you're trying to live in Peoria, Glendale, Phoenix, it can be more expensive. So one of the things I was also gonna show is, all right, so this is based off a $400,000 house, you're putting 5% down. So 5% of 400,000 is $20,000. All right, so let's say you're putting $20,000 down. What would your cost be if you bought a $400,000 house, right? So right now, interest rates are about 6.5%. Uh, just above that, it's about 66 .6, And that's conventional. If you do FHA, if you're like a first-time home buyer doing FHA, it's about 6.1. So let's say 6%. And this is, I'm just using these numbers um, because it takes into the tax charts and the premiums and all that stuff into account. You're paying about $2,600 if you're buying a house, paying $20,000 down. Okay. It's much higher than the $1,400 at 30%, right? 
So that's where a lot of people are saying, I, I shouldn't buy right now. And I totally understand that. And I totally support that because, again, it's about your situation. So let's do some different numbers, all right? So let's say you're married. You make $100,000 together, all right? So now this number goes up. It, you know, your gross is 8333 Um and then we see the net is 6,368. I don't know why I didn't say that for the 8,333. <laughs> but anyway, so 6,368, if you both together make $100,000. All right, so let's do the math on that, right? So 6,368 minus 70%. So it's about $1,900 a month. All right, now listen, you can find houses to rent for $1,900 a rent a month or especially apartments you can find that well depend again depend on where you are because i know i had one client she was running she had a couple kids they were running a three-bedroom apartment in phoenix and they were paying twenty five hundred dollars a month that's crazy so anyway so if we're trying to stay under 30 percent that's around 1900 so that's where a lot of people are no longer trying to stay under 30 percent because for them they're going okay if i let's say you go to find a place to rent, let's say you have kids or whatever, you're having to pay $2,200, $2,300 a month, right? Let's say that's what you're paying, $2,100 to $2,300 a month. But if you bought a $400,000 house, you could pay almost the same price. That's where people are starting to choose to buy, is when it's close, when the rent is close, where it's like, okay, it's a couple hundred dollars more a month for me to rent, or for me to buy, I'm gonna do that. And that's where it comes down to everyone's situation, right? Depending on where you stand with your finances, with debt, all those different things, what you're renting. If you're like, hey, I'm already, it's only a couple hundred dollars more a month. I can be at 35%. I'm going to take that chance and I'm going to probably try to refinance in the future at some point. I understand that. But again, everyone's situation is different because it's about making good financial decisions. That's part of what I'm here to do is help people make good financial decisions to help them make the best decision for them. Sometimes that means it's renting and waiting to buy. Sometimes it means buy now or sell now. I would love to have that conversation with you. It's again, it's truly about you and what's best for you. It's not about me getting a sale or anything like that. It's about helping you find out what's best for you. So I would love to have that conversation. My information's below. I hope you'll reach out. Guys, you've been listening to The Real. 